Alrighty, so I just want to go over just a couple things about the CyberPower PC. I want to mostly focus on the negatives rather than the positives. Uh, sorry, just turning up the volume on my mic. Uh, so first off, the one problem that you're going to face with this PC is the fact that it has a major overheating problem. And let's just take a look-see. And I can show you why. So this case has three intake fans at the front and one a, one exhaust fan. Normally, a good computer case will come with three exhaust fans or one or two intake fans because it needs more uh, more hot air being pushed out because hot air rises. It doesn't really need too much uh, fans pulling in. Like computers back in 2014 only had exhaust fans and didn't really even have intake fans. Um, but if we look here, you can see that there that's one of the slots up top there where it pulls air in. That entire little rail there. Now, they're literal pinholes. Probably about seven or eight. It isn't very big. It kind of sucks. And then at the bottom, it's a similar situation. It is a little bit bigger, but again, still not enough. The way I fixed it for me was drilling three holes down the middle where the fans are and then three holes down the side both sides so nine holes in total and it actually decreased my heating by like 15 degrees which is fantastic it put it right into a reasonable amount uh, overheating wasn't a problem anymore next problem with this computer is this little tp link adapter they give you i tried looking it up you can't even find it for sale anymore it is uh is incredibly bad um my internet normally uh where i am is sits at 55 megabytes per second this thing pulled it down to like 10 almost like crippled crippling it it almost didn't work i would highly recommend just go with either a power adapter a whoopsie a power adapter or what does it do that power adapter or get one of these this is the one that i have for two of my pcs and it's fantastic for 14 dollars. highly recommend it it is incredibly fast easy to use you just plug it in she's good to go uh you can automatically just connect to your internet and you'll be much happier with having an antenna uh, almost any of these would probably be better than what it has i just recommend getting an antenna if you are going to be buying one this this would be the best bet buying one of these but sometimes they can be a little bit expensive. But yeah, this one would slip into your PCI port. This one you would have to open up your computer to actually hook up. It wouldn't be very hard, but it again, most people don't want to have to open up their PCs. That's why you're looking at buying a pre-built. But it is what it is. Um, I talked about customer service before in the past, and it's not the best, uh, like most customer service. So, the RX 580 one doesn't come with an SSD. Basically, what that means is the Windows files take about, I want to say a minute and 45 seconds. I, I did a test because I added an SSD. I believe it was a minute 45, and for it to load with an SSD was about, I want to say, 15 seconds. Uh, it is very inexpensive to add an SSD. It's about 20 bucks, and then you will use, well, at least what I remember recommend is uh, this program to transfer your files from your hard drive to your new SSD you want to make sure to send your Windows files over you go to your BIOS and then you switch everything to run from the SSD to load your Windows files to make it run faster it frees up your hard drive by quite a lot that is a free program super easy easy to use lots of tutorials Right now I'm running on all low settings just to show how high the FPS can get on this thing without having to do any overclocking whatsoever. Uh, I use a 144Hz monitor, very very useful. I very much like the RX 580, I do use the 1060 as well and I have to say that's a great card as well. Uh, the other downfall to this computer is the fans are fine but they only shine red and you cannot turn them off. You cannot. Like, as soon as they're on, they're on, you can't flip on and off like the other one. So that's uh, another drawback that you should consider if you're looking at buying either of these two PCs.
The RX 580 graphics card is a little bit stronger, not necessarily in Fortnite, but other games like Apex Legends, I get like an extra 20 to, uh, I want to say 20 or 30 extra frames per second when I play on all epic settings, which is fantastic. But on Fortnite, you'll probably lose, I believe it's like 6 or 7 FPS, which isn't the end of the world. But on other games, the RX 580 works a lot better. If you look at my my uh, FPS right now, you can see that like it's not struggling whatsoever. Here, I can even switch it over to all epic. Show you guys, but you usually get a, over 60 frames. Highest is about 80 or 90, depending on what the heck you're looking at. Uh, the keyboard and mouse that come with this one are totally fine. Uh, they are more than usable, you'll be happy with them. But if you do want a mechanical keyboard or a better gaming mouse, there are pretty inexpensive ones. That's what I'm all about. I have reviews on the other keyboards that I bought, uh, the other mouses that I bought. And I'm much happier with them, but by far you will not hate the mouse and keyboard that comes with your computer. Especially if you're new to PC gaming and you've never used a mechanical keyboard, you don't really know what you're missing. Uh, again, a lot of people always ask me, because they switch from, over from a console, they ask, can I use, uh, use an Xbox controller to play? And it's actually incredibly easy. If the game exists on a console, like uh, PUBG or Fortnite or Apex Legends, a uh, PS4 controller or an Xbox, if you just plug it in, it's already good to go. That's all you have to do is just plug it in. The controls will be already preset. You can change them around if you want, but there's no special special adapter needed you just need the cord from micro usb to usb uh. um i would say if you do know how to build a pc just build one yourself but if you're uncomfortable uh or just don't want to maybe you just don't have the time because no matter what when you build a pc i've built this year, probably five or six. I think I'm up to six now, but every single time when I build one, there is always one one insignificant thing that I miss or I forget to do, and it's an entire ordeal from forgetting to update the BIOS to uh, not plugging in one of the wires properly or one of the SATA cables isn't connected right, and it is just an absolute nightmare because then you have to now build the PC backtrack what you did wrong put it all together again and then hopefully it works and even if it does work you still have to load the windows files you have to buy the windows uh code to be able to get rid of that watermark do you have a full edition of windows uh and in the states they're not cheap anymore they used to be ten dollars in canada they're still ten bucks but in the states they're really not i don't know why america amazon really cracked down on people getting cheap windows because i don't really think windows cares it doesn't cost them any more money to produce any more codes they could have unlimited if they wanted to but if you do know how to build one go for it if you don't this is a fantastic pc with little to no work needed to make it run better just the heating problem is the number one concern for me if you're not noticing what your heat's at like with my new case there i can show you guys close so with my new case, I get much lower temperatures, like 73. With my old case, I was almost hitting 90 all the time. Uh, I got 86 literally all the time. This new case, I bought a Hellfire. Hellfire, it's much better. Uh, the old case I used to build my girlfriend's brother's PC for Christmas, if you guys watched that video. Uh, I ended up drilling holes into his and, like, like I said, just fantastic. Literally pulled it down 15 degrees just by doing that. So now his sits, uh, I think, I want to say the highest that he said it goes to now is 78, which is perfectly fine. Anything under 80 is perfect. Uh, it doesn't have too many ways for dirt or debris to get in. My new case really does. It's completely like an open concept. So it does pull in a lot more cat hair, dust, dander. Kind of sucks. But... Yeah, above all, I would give the CyberPower PC RX 580 uh, 8 out of 10 for price. 
and ability. Like, I'm running at over 60 frames right now on all Epic, which is fantastic. Much, much better than the console ever could do. Again, thanks for watching. I have another video of the cons to the other PC if you guys want to watch that.